So we are looking at how to answer an exam standard question in 10 easy steps and we have reached our step 9. And our step 9 is now to do with workings. What you've got to see is that um, in the previous step we went into our question, we dived in, we left a page blank for ourselves and we started doing our work. And it's very, very important that if you are doing, say, your income tax computation and a lot of your calculations will be part of your working, you want to be able to do your cross-reference correctly. So I'm going to take you back to the answer that we had in our step 8 and to show you how the cross-referencing is really a key part of our um, answer. So I bring you back to the answer that we had tried to attempt on Peter Sheik, question one of the pilot paper. And what you see is that I set down my income tax computation. I told uh, the, the marker that I have employment income in this question, and if you want to know where I got the 141835, go to working one. So what the marker would do is that the marker would flip the pages looking for your workings, and he would then come to the workings page, which, which is there. And what he will see is that he's got, oh, yes, you have got working one as employment income. If you notice that I've got my working number and I have also labelled the working number. Um, I will take you through the second one. If you, look at, we have, if you look at the next one, we've got our property income. And what I'm saying there is work. Property income, 3,660, can be found in working to. So again, what the marker would do is he would go and look for your workings. And when he gets to the working page, and when he gets to the working page, he's going to look for working to, and he sees, ah, there is your property income. And at the end of that, the total of the property income at the end of that, the total of the property income is 3,660, which corresponds to what you have on your income tax computation as your property income. So it's very important to be able to cross-reference your, your workings so that it's easier to make for the market to follow. I always tend to tell students in my class, is that, yes, you have done all the hard work. You have spent the five, six months studying the paper, answering questions, going into the exam, answering the exam. Once you have done all of that, it's then all in the hands of the marker because it is the marker who will be marking your script. And I tell the students, be nice to the marker. Your exam paper is in the hands of the marker. So now what you've got to do is make the marker's life a lot more easier. If the marker sees your work is very well cross-referenced, the marker will like your work and he sees, right, employment income, working one. He flips the page and there is working one with employment income. It becomes very easy for him to follow your work. In somewhat way, what I'm trying to tell you is leave an audit trail. Let your exam paper speak for itself. Let your exam paper guide the marker that if you're looking for property income, you will find it in working too. And when the, the marker flips to your workings, he says, oh yes, working too? Working two, we have it nicely labelled property income. So what you've done here is you have actually made the marker's life a lot more easier. And the marker's going to like marking your script now because you're making his life a lot more easier. You're giving him an audit trail to follow. So to summarise our step nine, what we have learned is prepare your workings, making sure that you cross-reference. Remember, you want to make 
the marker's life easier, you want to get in the good books of the marker, you want the marker to have a smile on his face when he's marking your paper. And he will give you the mark as well.